But today's speaker is Amos Sifuna, educational background. He has a bachelor's in medical laboratory, Kenyatta University, a master's in project management, Jeku Arts, master's in missions, Africa International University, history in ministry. He was a STEM staff in 2011, a CEO chair at KU 2009, a campus ministry facilitator from 2013 to 2017, a youth pastor, a pastor's trainer. He serves at Sitam Kitale. Family. He is married with two children and guardian to 10 children. Dear congregants, Help me invite Emo Sifuna as he comes to minister on the topic, the grace of giving. Praise Jesus and good morning. He said that we need to be seen. Thank you. Um, it's good to be here this morning. I am not a stranger here. Stranger here. I have been here for a couple of years. Um, I have a relationship with this CEO for the last 13 years, so I'm not a stranger here. I know, I know, I know people. Yes, I am. Uh, also have my girls here. I don't know where they are. Me, where are you? These are my grandmother. Then there is another one called Rosie Wedge. Yes. So I am also a, a parent here. So thank you. Pray for me so that this thing does not fall down. Looks like it can. Looks like it can. So my assignment is simple. I expect to have some friends in the second service, but today uh, this one I'm alone with you guys this day and with the Holy Spirit. So my assignment is simple. We don't have a lot of time. Uh, let's go to the book of Second Corinthians chapter eight. With their second Corinthians chapter 8. We will read a few verses in chapter 8, and we will read a few others in chapter 9. And that will be the text that we will be reflecting upon in our sharing as we talk about our subject today. <coughs> So chapter 8, we'll read verse 1 to 7. And now, brothers, we want you to know about the grace that God has given to the Macedonian churches. Out of the most fear trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty were up in the generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability. Entirely on their own, they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the saints. And they did not do so as we expected, but they gave themselves first to the Lord and then to us in keeping with God's will. So we urged, uh, we urged Titus, since he had earlier made a, uh, a beginning, to bring also to completion this act of grace on your part. But just as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, in your love for us, see that you also excel 
in this place of giving. So let's also read chapter 9, verse, um, verse 6 to 16. So we add, sorry, this uh, 8. And whoever sows generously, we also reap generously. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to do, not reluctantly or under comp uh, compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to make all best upon to you, so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, he has scattered abroad his gifts to the poor, his righteousness and your soil. Now he who supplies seed the sower and bread for food, we also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Well, this service that you perform in is not only supplying the needs of God's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God because of the service by which you have proved yourselves. Many will praise God for the obedience that you have other accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for His incredible. I pray that you speak to me as your servant. And you speak for my brothers and sisters who are seated here, expecting to hear from you. I pray that you take away every words that may be my own. Just bring to us a message filled with power and glory. And glorify yourself in this service. In Jesus' name. Amen. Buenas tardes, Sana. You see, I grew up in a church where, in a denomination where, we had a few readings. We had uh, the first reading, then we had a song in between the reading, and then we had the other reading. I don't know whether I was the only one or I have a few others that were in, in a church like myself. Then I joined another one where we would read one verse and say, close the Bible. Jesus wept, close the Bible. And then we will switch the rest of the service. <laughs> uh, just explain how Jesus uh, worked. Uh, but later I realized that uh, if you don't want to miss what the Bible says, you actually need to read a sizable portion so that you get to hear what is it that the Bible is actually saying. There's a difference between what I am saying and what, what the Bible is saying. And unless I read a sizable portion, I'm just likely to tell you what I am saying and not what the Bible is saying. Now, the subject of giving, the way it has been presented in our modern day age, <clears throat> it attracts a lot of suspicion. Suspicion because I have experienced it. When I was in high school, I attended a crusade in our town. In those days, 20 bob was a lot of was good money when I was in high school. Because you would buy food bread. And perhaps sometimes remain with some change. Now I attended that break and as a high school boy I had 40 more. And when the message was preached, I knew the Lord was speaking to me and I needed to give him something. But I didn't have the opportunity to give God. Because the list that was written on the envelope that you were giving that message was 200. So I 
I couldn't give. Uh, I had to go away with my voting box. Feeling very bad because the least that I was to give was 200. Not 200 was the whole pocket money that I needed for the whole town. <laughs> yeah. Now, let me leave that story and come where we are. So giving, what I was simply saying, has been misused in church with our televangelists and really we actually don't know what is it that giving is all about. And I thought that uh, in a few minutes that we have, let's just see for ourselves what is it that God will be expecting us to give, in which manner will he be expecting us to give. Because I think what I was even taught when I was growing up in church was not true. So there are two extreme options that we are we have been taught. One of them is what I call the prevailing transactional compulsive manipulative approach of giving. Transactional, compulsive, and manipulative. That is one option that I know of. We are brothers and sisters and people in church have been taught or if not taught have been manipulated in the service to give in a transactional sense and be told that you give this plant your seed do you have seeds this morning? are you carrying seeds? plant the seed and in due time you are going to have it and we have stories of people who have gone to church with school fees of their children in rent because of how powerful the pastor was presenting the message. They actually gave out their rent and some of them, their houses, were closed. Not because they were willing to give, but because the message came so powerfully and compulsively until they gave away their rent. Have you ever had a sermon like that? Have you ever had a sermon like that? And I have seen some instances where when a pastor is preaching like the one that maybe I'm doing, offering will start coming at the apostles. And I am wondering, where did we get that theology from? Is it? And there are stories like I am connecting with the anointing. I am connecting with the grace of man of, of the man of God. Who told you that? I mean, <laughs> do we connect with the grace of the man of God or we, we connect with the grace of God, brothers and sisters? Do I have the grace to give you? I have also received that. The grace of God. I don't have any to give. The only uh, the one I have is mine that I've received for free. So all those things I see them on TV and I'm wondering where did the rain start beating us? The other one that I see, probably the most common, is what I call the legalistic bare minimum approach. And this is not necessarily evil the legalistic bare minimum approach of tithe and offering. And I want to explain so that you don't take me incorrect. Tithe and offering are, are good things, isn't it? We are supposed to give tithe and offering. At least I know the Old Testament teaches that. But what that has happened is that in church out there, not necessarily in the sea. If I am a pastor, I value and perhaps judge the Christianity of a believer by how faithful they are giving their tithe and offering. That has been taught against the other ways of giving. 
where I have a child in my neighborhood or child in our family who is supposed perhaps to go to school, they don't have school fees. But I've been told by church that when I give a tithe and offering, I am the best giver on earth. So that when the other things are happening around me, I don't give them attention because I've been taught in church that the best, the only way to give is for you to bring full time. And the answer, the, 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 the is the word full, okay? Full time and full offering. So Christians have actually been taught that for you to be a good Christian, simply give your time and your offering. And there is nothing wrong with that. But is that all that there is in giving? Absolutely not. That is why I'm saying, I'm calling it the bare minimum teaching of time and offering. Now, these brothers here asked me to come and share on what is called the grace of giving. But I want to, to change it a bit and call it grace giving. So if your topic is the grace of giving, you can change it and call it grace giving. Now, where we come, where we have read the book of 2 Corinthians, all of us know that it was written by the Apostle Paul. And that the Apostle Paul is writing to the Corinthian church. He's writing to the Corinthian church, but talking to them or persuading them. A love offering to the Jewish church. The Jewish, you know, the gospel came from the Jews and it was taken to Gentiles. Corinthians were among the Gentiles. And so at that point, when Paul is writing, the Jewish church was in affliction. There was drought, they didn't have food, they were suffering. And so the Apostle Paul is writing to the Corinthians, persuading them to give a love offering so that it can be used to support the church that was in tribulation or in trouble. And he writes to them from where we began reading, giving an example of the Macedonian church and telling them, brothers, I want you to, to give your gifts, presenting a Macedonian church as an example and saying that the Macedonian church in their poverty and great trouble. Their joy in their hearts went out through the wells of generous giving. That's what he's telling them. Now, you need to know something about the Macedonian church. And so for our sharing, I want to share from the story, and I'll be referring the scriptures here and there. I want to share with you that the three principles that I've seen in, this, in our reading today uh, that I think are supposed to inform what I call grace giving. <laughs> Point number one that I want to share with us is the principle that I call the principle of willing. In our giving, the principle number one that is supposed to inform grace giving out of a graceful heart is what I call the principle of willingness. <clears throat> Verse 3 of chapter 8. But see, this is how it reads. For I testify that, now talking about the Macedonian church, Paul is talking about the Macedonian church. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able, and not even beyond their ability. Entirely on their own, they urgently pleaded with us. For the privilege of sharing in this service to the saints. Verse 12 of the same chapter. For if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, 
not according to what he does not have. I don't know why, whether you can imagine what, what Paul is saying. There was a church in Macedonia that is famously known as the Macedonian church. When Paul and the team were collecting the offering, it seems that the, the church was not given the opportunity to partake in the ministry of giving. And what I read here is that the church was so enthusiastic to give that they pleaded with their brothers, please allow us also, we want to, we want to give. Don't lock us out, we want also to give. They were not persuaded, they were not compelled. The, the chapel person did not come here to mobilize them to give. It's like the joy in their giving was so overflowing that they begged, allow us, please, do not, do not, do not leave us out. Allow us also to participate in the giving. That is beyond what we know today. For us to give today, we are supposed to be persuaded. In fact, I think perhaps pastors are master the art. They know it. We just we are told just they let the basket pass pass around. Now perhaps it's a how is it take a ribbon now? Oh, mungwa meniona, mungwa meniona. Leo the fire nini? The bullet is poor. But these are different. These guys that I see here are different. They are begging. Imagine they are begging that allow us also to participate in the giving. John, willingness is actually what the Lord looks at for the giver. And John Nanga puts it this way. I don't know how many of us know Elder John Nanga. He puts it this way. That if you went to church and you intended to give 200 shillings, but perhaps because of what happened or perhaps what you are told in church or preached to and you ended up giving a thousand shillings, he says what will be recorded? By God, for so you are giving me 200. <laughs> because that is what you are willing to give. And I think I agree with you. But Paul said that if you are willing, then your gift will be accepted. But the one that you are giving and you are not willing, I agree with you. But as fewer, tell your neighbor the principle of willingness. There's a story in the Bible, in the book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 1 to 11, of a couple that seem to be closely knit together, that is uh, Ananias and his wife, Sapphira. So during this time, the apostles, uh, the members of the early church, in the case of not having people who are lacking in the church, they decided that we are going to sell. It was a willing. Someone was to do it willing. And so people, some were selling land, others are selling whatever they owned. I don't know whether they were cars. I guess if they were cars, perhaps uh, some would be selling cars. But maybe Muko Potem. So Ananias and Zafira said, we are going to sell our plot so that we can also share with the brothers. But you see what happened is that Ananias and Zafira were doing that not out of a willing. They wanted kind of to impress, to impress the, the apostles, but from the depth of their heart, they were not willing to give the money. So after selling land, they decided that uh, they were going to give a bit of the money for themselves. And of course they took the portion to the apostles. And they said, we have given all that we had. You remember what happened to them? What is it that happened to them? 
When I read that portion, I actually realized that those days we had a ministry of burying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, ministry, because there were men who were anointed to burn. Immediately, Ananias fell down. Young men arrived, captured the body, went to burn. Then the wife, after some time, she overcame. Because they had liked the Holy Spirit in their giving. So the wife was asked, Okay, did you give all that you had said you're going to give? She was like, Yes. Then of course, well, immediately she said that she fell down. And the boys, the ministry of Barry, arrived and leave the body to go and then to rest. What they are simply saying is that what good is interest in brothers and sisters in us is not necessarily the amount of money that we are going to, to give. He is interested. Do you have a willing heart? Are you just giving because you have been compelled? Are you just giving because you have been manipulated? Are you giving to God because you are willing or you are giving for other reasons? Principle number one for us, our offerings to be accepted is what I call the principle of willingness. Tell your neighbor the principle of willingness. The principle of willingness. Recorded. The principle of willingness. 
Point number two. The principle of proportion. The principle of proportion. I read a few verses there, verse 8, I mean chapter 8, 1, 2, 3. <clears throat> and now, brothers, we want you to know about the grace that God has given to the Macedonian churches. Out of the most severe trial, the overflowing joy, and out of the most severe trial, the overflowing joy was the extreme poverty well up in the rich, in rich generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able and not even beyond their ability. Sorry. And even beyond their ability. Entirely on their own. That is up to verse 3. Chapter 9, verse 6 is what, what, what reads. Remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. <laughs> As I read this, I'm reminded of a story of Jesus and the, the widow. It seems like sometimes Jesus will behave funny. When people are giving their offerings, you will stand somewhere and as they pass, don't know whether it was physical or he actually knew as God. Okay, assuming it was physical, people are giving offerings, then Jesus was standing somewhere looking as, looking as the gang. People brought heavy coins, silver and gold, heavy. But there is this one woman who brought a few coins that were actually denominational of much lower value. But when Jesus was commenting about the givings of the people, interestingly, Jesus commanded this woman to have been the best giver and not necessarily those who brought much more money. What Jesus was looking at was not looking at the notes that were given. He was looking at the proportion of what someone has given and what they are actually able to function. Between someone who is earning a hundred thousand and that person that I are earning a hundred thousand, he gives okay, two thousand is an offering. And the person earning 10,000 gives a hundred as often. Who has given more? <coughs> okay, let me, let me give you another question. Is somebody who is? <laughs> okay, a person earning 100,000 gives 500 as an offering. And the person earning 10,000 gives a hundred thousand, not a hundred, a hundred shillings a suffering. Who has given more? Yes? That me and you, this is my way to apply me. What you are simply saying is that God, from what we see, is interested not just with the amount that we are able to see. And that's why sometimes I go to fundraising and I'm wondering. Because, okay, I go to a fundraising. Then, okay, Ulu Mishmiwa Meleta, Elf Shirin, Moja, Billy, Tatu, Wee Fanya Nini, Wee Kahapa. Napa ni kansan, sindo. Namungine, And let her motor. You are a motor, and I said, You are You wake up. <laughs> you wake up for 20. Now, from a Christian point of view, 
I see a problem there. Because Jesus taught that the right hand or the left hand should not know what the right hand is giving. Because the proportions of the even you who are seated here, the proportions vary. No. A German here, they actually did a German. I think I was a chair in the unit, I was among the poorest students. <laughs> yeah, because I will depend on my help only to do everything. I I use it, I will use it for to pay fees, I will use it to to give time, I'll use it to do everything. I never had anyone that I would ask money from. And so the little that I was able to give, or the much I was able to give, was out of the proportion, or perhaps the much that I was able to give. And so we need to understand that, that Jesus or God is interested, not in the amount, whether it is more or much, he is interested in the proportion of what he are able to Okay, if I give a thousand shillings, how much have I left? My communication. So the Bible says that we have a plan sparingly. Sparingly, it's like sacrificial. I don't swear, I mean, how, sac how sacrificial is your giving? Sparingly and bountifully comes from that kind of definition. It's not the much that someone has given. It's how sacrificial has someone given. That's why Paul is commending the Macedonian church, telling, telling us that even out of their poverty, their generosity welled up in their happy giving. They were struggling. It's like there's a pastor who went, uh, you visit someone, you visit a woman and they don't have anything that they can uh, even serve you for food. But you see, you mama na kucha na pay hard. Na na pay much. You realize this hard, if she had it, you would have given. Because that is what they, they have. God looks at that kind of approach. How sacrificial is your giving? That's simply what he's saying. Whoever gives sparingly, he says, he also reads sparingly. And whoever uh, sows bountifully, he also uh, reads bountifully. That's according to the law of God, he says. To the principle of proportion. Point number three. It's the principle that I'm saying, I'm calling the principle of self-giving. Age number five. And they did not just, they did not do as we expected, he says, of the Macedonian church. But they gave themselves first to the Lord and then to us in keeping with God's will. They gave themselves first to God and to us in keeping with God's will, God says, I mean, Paul says. So the Macedonian church did an interesting thing. That in their pursuit to give to the work of God, they did one thing. First of all, they decided that, okay, if we gave all our money to the Lord, and we are not in Him or for Him, our giving is in vain. In vain. If we gave all our lives to Him, but our life is not connected to Him, our giving is in vain. So what they did, they decided that we will give ourselves first of all to the Lord. And then after that, we will give our money to Him. But don't you think that sometimes people will be surprised that after they have served God, signed for God, perhaps given offerings and tithes in church, then it comes to the end of the day when God is choosing his people and separating. He tells them that I don't know you. You are tempted to ask God, God, don't you remember the offering that I gave 
He may see you those days. So you must not entice him to have known a secret. And first of all, they say, we are going to give ourselves before we give our resources. What a spirit. Resources are good, money is good. But the Macedonian needs a different thing. They first of all gave themselves before they gave their resources. And this is what stands out between the Christian religion and other religions. Because other religions, one will qualify, will merit to God by the mouth of good things they have done. If you give more to the poor, the vulnerable, according to Islam, God will count you a righteous person. According to, to Hinduism, the good things that you do over the years, once they are weighed and they appear that they are better than the ones, the bad things that you did, then you will be born. I don't know whether you understand Hinduism. If you are a poor person and you did good works, there is what we call karma, reincarnation, and you do good works, very well. When you are born another time, you will be born a rich person. So, yeah, that's what they believe. So Hindus, they want to work hard and do very well, so that when they are born another time, they are born in a better status. They actually think that if you do not give very well or help people very well, you can be born like a, you can be born like a bee, okay? You, when you die, you can be born a bee. Because you didn't do very well. So according to Hinduism, the poor people that they are in Hinduism, it is not because of anything, it's because they do not help other people, they don't do good ones. But is that the same with Christianity? It's not about what we have done, but it's about whether we have given our lives, first of all, to Christ or not, because our giving cannot merit us before him. I had two other points, but I want to conclude there because of time. So we have said three points, three principles of giving. One, willingly. Two, three, perhaps in the next session, I'll try to to look at uh, the two other points in the next session. About, so after I have given with those three principles, what is the outcome of those, of observing the three principles? I'll share a bit of that in our next service. So if you want to, if you have some time, you can hang around because I'll get some time to share. Because we don't just give. Our giving is, is more rewarding than what we, what we have been told. Our giving, we don't just get back what we have given. When we give, we, in return, God supplies grace. And we want to delve a bit in that in our next session. But as I ask us to stand. Because you love the world. You gave to only son Jesus because of not compassion but willingness. You gave your only son Jesus that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. As we hear the message of giving this morning, we are reminded that you are the best giver who gave your only son. That is the only that you had, but you decided that you will give so that you may get us to yourself. Lord, I pray that as we proceed to do other things, we will be reminded that there is nothing we can hide from you or we can have that is special because you gave all that you may have us. And thank you for those that have already accepted to live for you in our midst to walk, uh, to walk with you and to serve. I pray that as we end our service, anyone among us who may not have made a decision, you continue convicting them by your spirit so that they may come to a knowledge and a relationship. We thank you and we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen.
the Lord. Amen. What else if you attend? Amen. Yeah, it was a nice service. So we are here again for the next two hours. We experience uh, another moment with the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Yeah, if you have come late, uh, when you have already done the praise and worship with accessory, you can remain behind so that we can continue together. Amen. Yeah, may we share the grace of the Lord. Yeah, kindly a reminder also we end up SPG, uh, SPGM today, but uh, it has been postponed to another Sunday which will be announced to you. Praise the Lord, Lord. So we can share the words of grace as we prepare for the next service. May the grace of Jesus Christ and the love of God and the grace of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore.